saying uh, designing a Jordan is better than winning a Grammy? It's right up there. It's right up there. As a kid that grew up idolizing Jordan, loving the shoes, such an imperative, integral part of my childhood to be able to design my own Jordan. I mean, it was, it was the dream. What up, everyone? It's Macklemore, and this right here is my life in sneakers. GQ! All right, the newest pair of shoes that I have, just got them, haven't even laced them yet, is these Jordan ones. The Jordan 1 High Neutral Gray 85s. I've wanted these for a long time. You know, they came with a little Jordan tag, breaking down the history, not even, this is just what it came with. This is the OG. A pair of gray laces, and the leather seems pretty good. It's beautiful to me. And you know what's gonna be even more beautiful is when I actually lace them up and I beat these up and they look like they're from 1985. Because that is the way that this shoe was intended to be worn, was to beat the hell out of it. And I'm gonna do that. You just gotta, you gotta these up, man. You gotta beat this shoe up and you gotta go out and you gotta wear it. That's what shoes were intended for. I mean, if you look at like a pair of 11s, like patent leather Jordans, they're not gonna look as good beat up. You know, the patent leather creases in a way that just doesn't quite hit the icy sole when that turns like yellow. A pair of 11s just doesn't look as good. The first four Jordans, to me, look better beat up. Cause like that's what people used to wear their sneakers. Like this is like when it was coming out in the 80s, like people used to beat their shit up and it, it had a certain flavor to it. We're so precious now, it's like, walking like this, trying not to crease the toe. And I remember doing that back in the day, like my first pair of fours was definitely, you know, I don't think I, I bent my toes for like two months. But I'm probably gonna get two pairs of these, to be honest. I just feel like these are ones that I want in the collection. I wanna have a fresh pair for later on when I wanna beat them up, I wanna beat these up right now. The thing is, I get rid of shoes. Like I looked at all of the shoes that I have and I was like, I don't have like a ton of old, old shoes. But these are one of the pairs that are the oldest. It is a Legends of the Summer, Justin Timberlake, Jordan 1. Shout out to JT, another GOAT, along with Michael Jordan. I got them probably in 2013, I wanna say. They're bright as hell. Like if homegirl from Wizard of Oz, Dorothy, had a pair of Jordans, these would be them. They are sparkly, they are shimmery. We got the wax laces on deck on the side just in case you wanna go to white. That might actually look pretty hard. There's certain shoes that I'm like, man, I'm not gonna, I'm not wearing them. I just have never had an occasion to really stunt in the rubies. I haven't been invited to that party yet. If I was to rank these with the rest of Jordan 1s, um, they might be like, uh, 42. Um, they're not my favorite. They're not. Like, what do you wear these with? I don't even know if Justin Timberlake ever wore these, but a really nice gift. It was a really nice gift. JT, if you have any idea uh, what I could match these with, please let me know. Um, no ideas over here at all. Rarest. These are Jordan 6s, Earl Thomas, a PE that was made for him. They got the 29 in the back, cleats, Seahawks colors, and the material is just fire. After the Seahawks won the NFC Championship game, we were back in the locker room celebrating, and um, Earl had these and I commented on them. He was like, bro, you can have them. Signed them on the spot, gave them to me. I mean, the 6s are some of my favorite Jordans, period, but to get a game-worn pair on the game, the NFC Championship game that we won to go on to win the Super Bowl. I performed at halftime. Um, this is just a very special pair of shoes. And I'm not a big signature guy, but for some reason I was just in the moment, and I was like, bro, sign these. And, um, and he did. They got a little bit of blood up here. Got some 49er blood up at the top. Yeah, we won that game. I would imagine myself and Earl Thomas are the only people with this shoe in the entire world, which makes it 
the rarest and worth $1.2 million. <laughs> uh huh. These guys. This is a very rare pair of shoes, man. You know, a lot of people might not be hip to the mellows. This was the first thing that Jordan brand hollered at me about, was doing a mellow. I was like, I would love to do a mellow. And I would also love to do a Jordan. But this was the first thing that they let me do. I just flooded the whole thing. Northwest, salmon. We got the shark face gang at the bottom. This was the old shark face gang logo that we had. We got the flight plate. I feel like if you were like a freestyle walker, you could you could grind really easily with the with the flight plate. Yeah, these are these are dope, man. I don't wear them. They're very much a hoop shoe. They only made, I believe, 23 pair. And not many people have these. Obviously because of 23 pairs, but like I definitely still have some in the garage. Let's put it that way. Team Jordans. It hasn't been my thing as much and no disrespect. I think what's good about it is for a lot of people, um, it's an entry point into Jordans. And you know, for being real, like Jordans are super expensive. Like even those those 85 ones are like, you know, they were like, ah, oh, yeah, those are gonna be 229 or whatever. I'm like, damn, for some ones, I think that there's like this stigma with like looking down on Team Jordans, like, oh, that's not the, you know, you got the Bammer Jordans, those are bootleg. And I might, you know, I might think that in my head, but actually it's great accessible point. And they're still expensive. It's not like we're talking about like some Payless shoes here, like there's still some bread, but it's just not, you know, yeah, we're gonna get you for the 225. This was kind of my gateway into designing the Jordan 6s. They were gonna leave it at this. Like that was the plan. But you know, I have a nostalgia, a connection to the past with Jordans. And um, you know, luckily they were super accommodating. Let me do a six as well. Mm, 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 mm. These are the clay sixes. Man. Yeah, I got to design these. My collaboration with Jordan ranks with all of the amazing things that I have done with music, that I have gotten to do through music, this has to be top. I mean, it's damn near just one, period. You know, the little pink jump man, cute as hell, all pink and salmon and shit. The wax laces, icy sole, pull tab, they're just nice. I mean, we got the shark face gang in the back. And like all of these things, like putting the logo in the back, this was at the time a rare thing. Like they didn't really let everyone do that that got PEs. And I remember like we had, cause they wanted to do just the regular air with the Jumpman, but the Nike air, that to me symbolizes the OG era of, of Jordans and something that's really special. And, and I was like, yo, can we do the Nike air in the back? And this was before they had retroed anything. And they were like, Hard no, definitely not putting the Nike Air in the back. So I was like, can I do my look? You know, I'm down there, I'm trying to spin shit, I'm manipulating, I'm trying to hustle. And uh, we ended up on my own logo in the back, which was super fire. Um, definitely had to go through some bureaucracy to do that. You know, we sampled a bunch. We sampled like five different pairs. And I really wanted to do like a flooded jade color green. But I also had these. At a certain point they were like, Look, like if you really want to do two, we can do two. Which was like, oh my God. Yes, yes, let's do two. And for the most expensive pair of shoes that I own, Emerald City Sixes. I have seen them online for up to 20K, maybe even 25. They're pricey. The idea was cactus and clay. And my guy Lace helped me think of that. These are just special. Like there's just nothing like these. 23 pairs made. And I think Jordan had some made himself. Jordan, when he first saw these was like, I don't like green. I don't fuck with green. Up until this point, to my knowledge, there wasn't really a green pair of Jordans. He didn't like green. I was like, whatever, these are about to slap. I'm not tripping at all. We need to get away from the red and the black Michael, we need to switch it up. We need to push the envelope. And sure enough, 
Uh, he listened, Jordan listened, and they let me, they let me do it. I think the reason why they're more than the Clays, I think they just stand out. And again, the fact that they were, if not the, some of the first green Jordans ever, um, the color is super unique. It makes sense why these would be just a little bit more than the Clays. But they're both gonna run you a bag. You have one of the wider release of your shoe? You know, I think that there's something special about, of course, having a pair of shoes that have, you know, there's only 23 pairs made of them. Uh, would I have wanted a, a bigger release? Um, sure, yeah. But maybe something slightly different for the friends and family. You know, I think that that's what makes, uh, I mean, we're talking about that exclusivity, that thing like, I can't have those. Like that is what drives the sneaker market. That is what tells the story. That is what we all buy into. So I think that if I was to have done a, a more general release, having it be slightly different than, you know, maybe these, maybe you just have the shark on the back of these ones, but not on the general release, something that differentiates the two would have been preferred. But um, I'm very happy with the way that it turned out in terms of um, 23 pairs. I think that it's a cool story. How do you feel about uh, Travis Scott and his Jack ones? I think it's dope. I mean, what, what Travis has done with Jordan has been incredible. I've really liked his collaborations. You know, he's just pushed the envelope. I really like what he's done with Jordan and they've obviously given him a lot of creative, um, you know, it's a different era. It's like we're coming off of like the Virgil era where he completely redid all these, all these shoes, all these classic shoes, um, Nike, Jordan, they're obviously in a place right now where it's like, look, we can't just keep putting out slightly different colors of the same shoe. It's not gonna work in the long run. And, you know, I think Virgil really cracked the code with that. I think Travis picked up the ball and ran with it. And it's, and it's you know, if you look back, it's cool to have been, you know, in 2013 or whatever these were, um, 14, to have been kind of, you know, the first person to, uh, to really get some creative license to do something outside the box. All right, you probably noticed that most of my shoes are Nike. If I was to pick a shoe that is not Nike, that doesn't have the swoosh, I'm going with the classic Chuck Taylors. Even though Nike owns Converse, like a Converse is a Converse. This, this is not a Nike. You know, out of all of the shoes that I have performed in, I, I go back to Chuck's. I don't know why they're not comfortable. They probably have killed my arch support or lack thereof, but there's something about Chuck's that are just timeless. They just feel different. They're, the material's more heavy duty. It's kind of like a, a Carhartt jacket almost of a fabric. At the show, you know, I have a bunch of outfit changes. These are gonna go with every single outfit change that I have at the show. Um, I love these. We're coming in with these. The Hoka Ones. These shits are just comfortable. The midsole is like fucking three inches. I feel like I'm a better dad when I wear them. I can walk hella fast. When I think of the dad shoe, I think of the Monarchs. That's the number one dad shoe to me. Obviously they became very trendy. Pete Carroll was at the forefront of that trend for years. We used to always talk about Pete's shoes, like what is he doing? Like someone needs to tell Pete, like those don't look good. Sure enough, Pete was right the entire time. Pete knew that these were gonna circle back. Yeah, it's it's dope to pare down some, some like more flashier shit on top with just like a chill ass dad shoe. Like, I'll wear a suit with a dad shoe. I'll wear an iced out watch with a dad shoe. Just let me just be a dad out here. Let me not flash. Let me drop my kids off at school in the Phantom, but hop out with the Hocus, okay? It's like humility in a Phantom. All right, most underrated. These SBs, I love the Kilty. The kill tie, the kill tee. I'm not sure how you say it, but I love this shit. Yeah, it's kind of a tartan argyle. We'll go with that. It's a tartan argyle in the back. This is classic golf. You know, if you look at a lot of the old golf shoes that, you know, Foot Joy was putting out, other companies back in the 60s, the 70s, they did this. 
I feel like these are, the reason why I put them in the most underrated is because I feel like the internet would be like, oh man, those are ugly. You know, why would you wear that on your shoe? Like you wear it on your shoe because no other shoe has this and you can take it off. I think they're underrated, man. But now that I actually think about it, I've never worn them. So maybe they're not underrated. Maybe they should just stay in the closet. For the most unexpected shoe, a new passion of mine is the game of golf. That's right, golf. Never would have thought that I would have been into golf. And not only into golf, I am absolutely obsessed with the sport of golf. And I am coming out with my own golf clothing company called Bogey Boys. One of the cool things that has already transpired um, is that one of our prints, this is called the dog leg print. It's kind of an all over print. Aerial view of a golf course. Foot Joy made a pair, one of ones for me to wear. And um, I love this shoe, man. I, I've always been inspired by golf clothing. The OG tartans, the plaids, the Arnold Palmers, the Lee Trevinos, the dudes that just had style back in the day. That's always been a huge place of inspiration for the clothes that I wear currently, you know, that, I, that I've been wearing from the jump. So I really love, Fajoy makes like classic old golf shoes. So they did three pairs of, of one of ones for me. Very gracious. I love the shoe. I love the print and I'm just pumped to be able to put the brand into the world. And yeah, you can go to bogeyboys.com. Bogeyboys.com and you can shop all the gear, but we don't have these for sale. These are just your boys. I didn't do this the way that you wanted me to. I didn't do a top five of all time. I did some of all time. I did some that I just like right now. Some beat ass cement fours with the Nike Air on the back, creased as hell. This to me symbolizes my childhood. This symbolizes my first introduction to Jordans. It's just, it holds a special place in my heart, man. Of course, you got the air bubble that you cannot see through, can't see shit. I'm sure if I try these on, yeah, like I could just break these. I kind of want to. It's a special shoe. It's definitely in the top five. We're talking top five. You gotta go with red ones. So this is the band shoe, also called the bread. This is the Air Jordan one. This is really what started it all. These are from 01, second re-release. I mean, in a way, you could really say this shoe started sneaker culture. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's a stretch. You have some of the most iconic pictures of Jordan dunking on cats in this shoe. So these are the Oregon Duck 3s. Now, I picked the Oregon Duck ones because I wanted to um, flex on the internet. These ones are special because they're the pit crews. These were given to me. I, I believe we did a show at the University of Oregon and they gave me a pair of these. I mean, just the O in general, like the embroidery is super thick. The pit crew's hella thick. We got the, the duck feet in the back. I love threes. I haven't worn threes for a while. But even looking at these, I'm like, man, I need to start wearing threes again. Like this is just, um, you know, one of those three, top three Jordans of all time. The Red Octobers. Ye just killed these. And honestly, like this was definitely an inspiration behind my flooded green ones. You know, this was kind of the first like real flooded shoe that I can think of. They're just special, man. There was so much hype around them for so long, like when they were gonna come out. We thought they were gonna come out, they didn't come out. We thought, you know, and then finally they just kind of came out of nowhere. They're a half size too small. I don't care, I don't care. There's a performance that we did in Times Square for the ball drop, New Year's Eve. And I'm wearing a pair of Red Octobers. You know, the most sought after shoe that you can possibly get and I took my Red Octobers off my feet and I threw them into the crowd at Times Square. Those bitches were fake. I would never throw these into a crowd, okay? But great, great, great publicity, you know? Oh my God, Macklemore threw his shoes into the crowd. Those are worth $12,000. Those were $250 on the internet, okay? They were fake as hell but they looked real. One of my defining moments.
as a human. Let's look at these, let's throw them in. This is another one. I mean, I'm not putting these in the top five. I think that, but we could throw them in for the purpose of this. I think that they're just a great design. This colorway, I don't think has aged quite as well in terms of the like fluorescent pink, but this was very much like pink polo, yay, era, a throwback to that. You know, if you were to play like glow in the dark laser tag, like these would be a shitty shoe to wear because motherfuckers would just know where you're at at all times. But they're really dope. They're a classic. Do you want to see Kanye come back to Nike? Yeah, I think that what Kanye has been able to do at Adidas is have probably more creative say in his line than he would have at Nike. So I think that if he went back to Nike, it would be awesome, you know, for him to get a stake. I think that there is something, he is such a defining, pivotal person in terms of setting trends that he should be rewarded as such, like on the financial end. Um, not just like, yeah, man, we'll let you do some shoes, but like, no, like actually you get a stake in this shoe. Um, there's ownership there. I believe that that's where Ye is at and really where a lot of celebrities are at in terms of, you know, putting their stamp on things and making shit cool. Um, you know, these brands, as much as we love them, have not necessarily been as kind to some of the other athletes um, that have made them what they are. And Nike has always had that pull where it's just like, yeah, if you wanna fuck with us, like we're not giving you a bag or the bag is small. And um, I think that it's time to usher in a new era where people are rewarded for their, their creative influence, where they're rewarded for their social capital. And not just like, yeah, we'll give you free shit. Like, that's cool, but Kanye is on a different level right now. Of your top five here, choose your top three and take the other two off. If I was to narrow this down to three, I'm gonna get rid of these. I mean, I gotta get rid of, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, this is the foundation. This is the foundation. This is what started it all. These ones right here, I'm not getting rid of them. All right, and you're not gonna like my final question for you. I want you to choose one pair to wear, one pair to sell, and one pair to keep. Mm. Yeah, I mean, can we go back now? Because I'd like to sell these Red Octobers. Um, one pair to wear for the rest of my life. I mean, these. This is what this is what I'm gonna wear, okay? For the rest of my life. Can always wear these. If I, I'm gonna, I gotta wear one, I gotta sew, and I gotta keep one, right? These aren't worth shit, particularly in this state. Uh, so I'm probably gonna get like $35 on Craigslist. So let's just say we're gonna sell these, the pit crews. Could probably make a little bit of bread off these. I don't know, maybe 35 hundo, five racks. And then we're, we're gonna keep these for nostalgia's sake, okay? Just, there's something about this is my childhood. So I'm gonna keep these, I'm gonna wear these, and these are getting put up on StockX. As a sneaker fan yourself, who would you like to see come on the show? You know who really hasn't done a sneaker show who I would love to see? Michael Jordan. Have we really seen Jordan talk about shoes like that? Like go through and, you know, memories and design process and, I haven't seen Jordan do it. So I would love to see Jordan do it. I think that that would be amazing. Obviously there was shoes that probably he wasn't feeling at the time that ended up becoming iconic. Who knows? I would love to see that.